So what do you call the combinations? So the Fed's assumption is unemployment's low, inflation gets high, unemployment goes up and inflation comes down. That's the Fed's assumption. So they actually don't mind if unemployment goes up a little bit because it'll bring inflation down. But what happens when you have high unemployment and high inflation at the same time? The Fed thinks that can't happen. It has happened. It's called stagflation. Stagnant growth with inflation and prices. I lived through it in the late 1970s, early 1980s. It, it, I think around the 79, 1979, 1980, unemployment was 10%, but interest rates were 15%. So, so don't, don't tell me unemployment and interest rates move inversely. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they're, they can both go up together. It's called stagflation. And I see early signs of that. So it's a little, uh, a little bit troubling. But all I can say to our, our readers and our uh, our viewers is uh, uh, Wall Street always gets this wrong. The Fed always gets it wrong. The reason they get it wrong is because the, their models don't work. Their models are garbage. But uh, the inflation is real. It's going to stick around. Uh, and uh, But growth seems to be slowing. So we may end up in this kind of stagflationary episode. Jim Rickards recently raised a red flag suggesting that the U.S. might soon face stagflation, a dreaded economic condition where growth stalls while inflation continues to soar. This forecast is particularly alarming considering the current stock market is flirting with all-time highs. Amidst this backdrop, investors are surfing a high wave of optimism, but the stark reality of the economy threatens to drag them into a deep financial downturn. Stagflation could drastically diminish purchasing power, squeeze corporate earnings, and leave policymakers scrambling for solutions. With inflation eating into real returns and economic growth barely moving, the stock market now reveling in record highs could be on the brink of a sharp downturn. The fragile confidence of investors could easily break, leading to a market sell-off with wide-ranging consequences. Rickard's caution serves as a stark reminder that today's booming market conditions are built on shaky economic foundations. The looming threat of stagflation casts a dark shadow over the current market euphoria potentially leading to a tough period of adjustment for investors who aren't ready for the twin challenges of stagnation and inflation. We've been talking about this in our publications and, and interviews like this for, for months uh, or, or longer. Um, and this was at a time when the Fed was saying inflation is coming down, Wall Street's inflation is coming down, they're going to cut interest rates. The Fed was still saying, we expect three interest rate cuts between now and the end of the year. I mean, they were saying this in uh, you know the beginning of April. Uh, three interest rate cuts between now and the end of the year. Everyone thought that there would be no cut at the May meeting. Nobody thought that. Right? But you still had June, July, September, November, December. That's five meetings. The Fed's on a crazy schedule. They don't meet every month. It's like every six or seven weeks, but uh, eight meetings a year is what it boils down to. So uh, there, there is no meeting in August, no meeting in October. Uh, but so you had five meetings, you know, June, July, uh, September, November and December, and you're talking about three rate cuts. Okay, what? no problem. Five meetings, three rate cuts. That seems to work. Except, and this is what we said uh, a while ago, uh, inflation is not coming down. Now, that's the story. That's the narrative. That's what Wall Street likes to talk about because they just want to sell you stocks. So. The stock market has been climbing to unprecedented highs driven by the belief that the Federal Reserve might cut interest rates three times this year. These cuts typically make it easier for businesses to operate and encourage consumer spending, creating a more vibrant economic atmosphere. However, this hopeful scenario is at odds with a tough reality, persistent high inflation. Since June 2023, the Consumer Price Index has stubbornly hovered between 3% and 3.7%, significantly overshooting the Fed's comfort zone of 2%. Even with interest rates held steady at 5.5%, inflation refuses to cool down. This ongoing high inflation presents a tough choice for the Federal Reserve. Lowering interest rates in such an inflationary environment could make things worse, shaking the Fed's credibility and possibly triggering further spikes in prices. On the other hand, keeping or raising rates to fight inflation could suppress economic growth and dampen investor enthusiasm. This delicate situation highlights the Fed's difficult role. While the market's optimism soars on the anticipation of rate cuts, the persistent inflationary issues signal a bumpy road ahead. The big question is whether the Fed will take the risk of cutting rates in the face of stubborn inflation potentially leading to further economic instability. They stopped hiking rates in July uh, uh, 2023, so that, that is true. They're, they're just on hold for the time being, but they're not even close to a rate cut, and that's what we've been saying. Uh, but, Wall Street, you know, but Wall Street started talking about this two years ago. It was the summer of 2022. Remember, the Fed started raising interest rates in March 2022. 
At the time, rates were zero. When I say rates, we're talking about the Fed Fund's target rate. So it's a very, really short-term overnight rate. We're not talking about five-year notes and 10-year notes. Those are different. But um, the uh, overnight rate that the Fed targets, it was zero at the beginning of March 2022. Well, they just started hiking in March 2022. They finished in July 2023. So about 15 months of rate hikes. And they got it up to 5.5%, which is where it is now. Um, but the, the Wall Street started talking about the pivot in the, in the fall of 2022. Now, they didn't say it was going to be that month. But they said, you know, early 2023, the Fed's going to cut rates. Uh, well, then that turned into like mid-2023. And then it turned into late 2023. And then it turned into early 2024. Here we are in mid-2024, and they were still talking about it, but they've been wrong. For the last two years, the U.S. stock market has been riding on high hopes of a Federal Reserve pivot. After hitting a low in October 2022, the market has seen a robust recovery spurred by the prospect of softer monetary policies. Remember back in November 2021 when interest rates were at zero, the market soared to new heights. Fast forward to May 2024, with interest rates now at 5.5%, the market has managed to climb even higher, surpassing those earlier peaks. This impressive ascent, despite a much higher risk environment, indicates a market that's operating more on hope than on economic realities. This stark contrast between the market's optimistic expectations and the Fed's actual cautious stance suggests a high risk of a major market correction. Investors seem to be turning a blind eye to the likelihood that the Fed still dealing with stubborn inflation might not ease policies as soon as hoped. The market's continuous rise in spite of clear signs that inflation remains problematic and interest rates might not decrease in the near future points to a fragile situation. This mismatch between market activities and economic fundamentals strongly points to the likelihood of a significant market correction. Jim Rickard's cautionary notes are particularly relevant here. The market's baseless enthusiasm could lead to a sharp downturn if the anticipated Fed pivot fails to happen. Investors should pay close attention to these warnings and brace for a potential sharp reversal that could surprise many. Inflation peaked in June 2022, 9.1%. And by the way, Matt, let me just do a quick footnote on the definition of inflation. It shouldn't be complicated, but uh, people make it, make it so. When I talk about inflation, I'm talking about the Consumer Price Index, CPI, comes out monthly, computed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, Consumer Price Index, uh, and it's measured on a year-over-year -year basis. So you look at the monthly index and you say, what was it a year ago uh, that month? And then that's then you that, that's it. That's how they that's how they compute it. Now um, that peaked in June 2022 at 9.1 percent. By the way, the highest since the early 1980s. You got to go back over 40 years to find inflation up there. But it was 9.1 percent by June 2023. So a year later. It didn't come down to 3%. So, you know, remember at the, uh, after we marched in Baghdad in 2003, that President Bush went to the aircraft carrier and they had that big sign, mission accomplished well. Since the onset of COVID-19, the Federal Reserve has significantly increased the money supply through various stimulus measures. While the Fed stopped these actions in 2022, the U.S. government has continued to borrow heavily, causing federal debt to surge from $29.5 trillion in May 2023 to $34.5 trillion. This staggering $5 trillion increase has cascaded through the economy with money ultimately pooling into banks and large corporations, which often redirect these funds into the stock market, fueling its impressive growth. However, this financial scenario has pushed U.S. consumers to their limits, teetering on the edge of financial strain reminiscent of the 2008 crisis initially triggered by the collapse of subprime mortgages. With current interest rates at 5.5%, the burden on consumers is intense. This situation could necessitate increased government assistance for households struggling to keep up, potentially keeping inflation high and nudging the economy towards stagflation. Jim Rickard's cautions about stagflation are particularly pertinent in this context. The ongoing influx of government funds into the stock market, despite deep-seated economic strains, presents an illusion of prosperity. However, if consumer finances collapse, it could spark a broader economic downturn. The precarious balance between controlling inflation and maintaining economic growth is under threat, making the current market exuberance potentially the prelude to a severe correction. Investors are advised to stay vigilant and consider the possibility that the market's unbridled ascent might halt abruptly bringing substantial repercussions for the broader economy. The U.S. stock market is indeed reaching new heights, but the underlying economic fundamentals are shaky. Many companies are valued at steep multiples with their stock prices climbing even as revenues fall. This gap between stock valuations and economic realities signals potential danger. 
Jim Rickard's warnings should not be ignored, they serve as a cautionary tale. Instead of diving deeper into the market, investors would do well to take a more measured approach. The risk of a significant market correction in 2024 is real particularly if the expected economic adjustments do not pan out. Exciting the market now while values are still high could be a wise strategy to sidestep potential losses when the bubble bursts. In this uncertain economic landscape, prudence is essential to safeguard investments against a potential crash driven by unrealistic market expectations and fragile economic underpinnings.